I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we uncover the profound truths of salvation with Pastor Elvis Mamadou's enlightening book. It is called More Than Being Born Again. This book sheds light on the true impact of the salvation experience, bringing deep understanding to those who seek it. Today, we will explore how this timely guide helps people navigate their spiritual journey and live a life that glorifies God. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Prime 7 Media for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his impactful book. The links are below this interview. Pastor, thank you so much for see, uh, joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you, Logan, for having me. I'm very happy to be on your show today. Happy to have you on the show. This is a fantastic book. I think it's going to help a lot of people on their spiritual sure. journeys, that's for sure. The title is intriguing, More Than mm. Being Born Again. What do you mean by that? Yes, um, I got that title from inspiration and um, experience. Because um, when the Lord began to inspire me to write this book, there were a lot of things that were going on in the church among Christians that were not in line with the teachings of Jesus Christ. And the Lord kept pointing me to those things. And just to let you know, I started writing, I started working on this book from 1997. That's when I started working on this book and I was gathering materials. And uh, why was this so? Because people who call themselves Christians or who profess to be Christians were living lives that were contrary to what the Christian doctrine teaches. You find in the church so much, so much sin, so much um, infidelity, so much crime, so much, so many things that you do not expect to be happening among Christians or believers. You saw those things happening in the church among believers, and it becomes so shocking. And the question was: Do these people understand what it means to be a Christian or to be Christians, or how much more to become? born again Christians, as you say, because when you say you're born again, you're saying that you are now a changed person. I have changed. My ways of life have changed. I used to be this bad, but now I'm good. I've changed my lifestyle because the Bible says 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new. And the question I kept asking myself and the Lord kept asking me, what has become new in these people's life that say they are Christians today? So if looking at it between that time, 1995 and today, when I, okay, the book was first published 2007. That was it. And when you look at the trend today, things have become even worse among Christians today. That people become, people begin to question um, what our faith is. People cannot trust Christians again. When you say you're a Christian, people run away from They can't trust you. Why? Because everybody, a lot of people are conducting their lives in ways that are contrary to what Christ teaches. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a way of life. When Christ was on this earth, Christ did not establish religion. He just came to show us the way how to live our lives to please God. And that's how you will find that the first time when Christianity was mentioned in the Bible was in the book of Acts chapter 11, verse 26. The Bible says that people observed the disciples of Jesus. That was after Jesus had left this world. They saw the way they were conducting their lives. They were praying. They were helping people. And they were teaching people the Bible. And when people saw all that, the Bible said the disciples were called Christians for the first time in Athens. Why? What is Christianity like Christ? How many of us today can say we are living our lives the way Christ lived it? How many of us can say today that we Christians or believers or born again or pastors or ministers or workers, that we are truly living that life that Jesus um, um, ex expected us to live? So more than being born again is actually a teaching manual which teaches um, everyone who call themselves Christians or those who aspire to become believers also or born again Christians, that being born again does not end with obeying the altar call when the altar call is made by a minister in the church. It does not end with becoming a worker or a minister, or a pastor in the church. It goes beyond that. So being born again, is um, this book is meant to teach people to understand that becoming born again is the first step 
towards living the kind of life that Christ wants us to live, which is the life that pleases God, a life that is focused on heaven, that is focused on doing the things, the, doing the will of God. Like Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 7, when we read from verse 21 to 23, he said, it is not all who say, Lord, Lord, that will enter into the kingdom of God. Uh, the essence of becoming born again is for us to enter into the kingdom of God. That is after we have lived our life on this earth. And it's only those who have lived their life to please the Lord that will make it to heaven. So that is a warning from Christ to us that we should not just get comfortable with becoming ministers or with becoming workers or becoming pastors and not doing the will of God. So the book, more than being born again, is meant to let people know that there are other things that God expects us to do apart from obeying that um, slogan, being born again. Thank you. It's a very, very important message indeed. It it strikes right at the heart of salvation. Tell us how your book helps readers understand the deeper implications of being genuinely born again. Thank you, Logan. Um, like I mentioned, the book is a teaching manual. When you read for anyone that has a copy of my book, when you read from chapter one, continuously so that there are different topics how to help people understand. First, chapter one begins with what born again means. I explained everything there. I even gave practical examples of what it means to be born again, that it doesn't just end with professing to be born again. And then from there, we move on. There are chapters there when we talk about faith which works. There are chapters there when we talk about being even conscious. All these things are all these um, different chapters in the Bible are meant to um, teach everyone to understand. And when you say you're born again, number one, or uh, when you say you're born again, you must understand what it means to be born again. The next thing you must understand that as a born again Christian, you must be somebody that is focused on heaven, focused on pleasing God. There's uh, but, uh, there's another aspect that I say faith which works. You don't say you're born again and your lifestyle contradicts what you profess to be. Otherwise, you become an hypocrite. Jesus mentioned that to us when you read Matthew chapter 7, also verse 16. It says that by their fruit, we shall know them. By their fruit means, okay, if you're not a farmer, if I'm not a farmer. If you're not a farmer, there is no way you'll be able to know uh, an, an apple tree or an orange tree, just from the tree or from the leaves. But you get to know that tree from the fruit that it has borne. So that was what Jesus was telling us about that. By their fruit means by their ways of life, by their conduct, you will know if they are truly Christians, if they are truly born again, by their conduct. So the book is a practical manual that when everybody reads it, you see there, how do you, how do you show that you are even conscious? You are even conscious like Joseph. Joseph was faced with a temptation to commit a sin, even though nobody was watching. He, asked, he made this statement in Genesis chapter 39, verse 8 to 9. He said, how can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? That is somebody that is conscious about God, conscious about heaven, conscious about pleasing God. So this book is to help us to know that if we say we are born again, we must be conscious about the things we do. Certain situations we find ourselves in, the question we ask ourselves is, what would Jesus do in the situation? So the book teaches everyone, believers, Christians, and believers to be that you need to become conscious of heaven, conscious of your salvation, because if you're not careful, you could lose it. So that is how the book, so it gives us a step-by-step -step guide all throughout to the end, and it ends with an analogy. Analogy means that the last chapter talks about analogy, giving us instances of things that happened in the Bible, because the Bible tells us that everything that has happened and that are recorded in the Bible, they are recorded for an example to us. Hallelujah. And Paul gave us example, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 25 to 27. He said, I am not living my life and I say, I, am, I, I do not punch the air like somebody that is just punching aimlessly. And they went to verse 27, he said, I do this thing consciously. I put my flesh under control so that after I have preached unto others, I myself, Paul, a old Paul, an apostle that had converted so many, so he said, so that I will not be a cast away. That's somebody that is conscious. So it's a good example to let us know that it is not enough to be Christians. It is not enough to be born again. It is not enough to be even pastors or miracle workers. What God wants from us is for us to live a life of righteousness and holiness. 
and always be conscious of that, that one day the Lord will hold all of us to account for the way we have lived our lives. Thank you, Logan. My pleasure. Great words, important words. This is your latest book. You've written other books as well, including When yes. the Road is Rough, God Does Not Change Destiny, and The Power at Work in You. Um, yes. Is this building upon the different themes you established in the other books by writing this latest book more than being born again? Um, it's not. Actually, all the books, all the four books that we just mentioned, and they are all they are all practical books. Practical. Let me like talk about when the road is rough. Very practical. Um, we have so many Christians, so many believers who have this notion that once they have become born again, they become absolutely immune to troubles. They become absolutely immune to problems. So when problem comes their way, they believe they begin to think or accept that God had failed them, that God had not fulfilled His promises to them, and that is not true. Because there are so many instances in the Bible when the Bible has made us to understand that, for instance, Psalm 34, verse 90 said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord God delivered them from us. So the fact that we are righteous, the fact that we are born again, does not immune us from the troubles of life. That is what that book is meant to teach. Very practical also. And there are so many instances there. That book was actually written from my personal experience in life, though I didn't put my personal experience really there. Next one is um. Um, God does not change destiny. Uh, but God does, it not, does not change destiny. The teaching in that man also, which is very practical, is that within Christian circle, we also have people who see that when things are rough for them or things are not going well for them, they believe that the situation they are going through is God's perfect way for their lives. And they begin to ask God to change, his, uh, to change their destiny. So the book teaches everyone to understand that the destiny, God, your destiny is God's perfect plan for your life before you were created. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, God said to Jeremiah, he said, before you were formed in the womb, I have known you and I have called you by your name and I've ordained you to be a prophet. So before God created us, he has a master plan for our life. So irrespective of what anyone is going through right now, no matter the turbulence, that person is not expected to accept that situation as the will of God for them, but rather it's just a process they need to go through for them to get to the destination, to their what final destination, which is that destiny. So the book is charging Christians not to begin or to, not to begin to pray to God and say, God, change my destiny. So that's why I said, titled it, God does not change that. It does not change his master plan for your life. And I gave instances of people who went through rough times. Eventually, they became who God ordained them to be. I said, the question now is, because of what they went through, now that things have turned around for good for them, does that mean that God changed their destiny? It did not change their destiny. So your situation does not mean, your present situation does not mean that is what God's final destiny for you is. And then the other one, the power to work in you is also a teaching manner, practical also, to make Christians and everyone know this for a fact, that when you are asked, when you, if you want to experience the power of God in your life, you want to experience the miraculous workings of God in your life, you don't sit down or lie down the bed and just wait for miracles to happen. God expects you to play a role. Everybody has a role to play. If you're praying to God for a change, if you're praying to God for a transformation or to experience his power in your life, God is also looking at you to see whether you have some powers. When I say powers, example, I get so many of those powers in the book. I talk about the power of obedience, the power of faith, the power of courage. Any of this power, any of these things, God expects to see, depending on our situation, God expects to see any of these powers currently and actively at work in us before it can bring its own supernatural power to bear in our lives. So that is what that is meant to teach because so many Christians just sit down there and just realize, yes, I pray to God and I want this to happen. And there is nothing absolutely going on in them. They are not taking steps to also find out what does God want me to do in this situation so that the power of God can be brought to bear in my situation. So the all before books are practical books just to teach us uh, just to teach us um, everything about what God expects of us so that we can please and that we can live a, a fulfilling life to the glory and honor of God. Logan.
Wonderful, wonderful words, wonderful advice, important books, practical books, as you mentioned. Pastor yes, yes. Elvis Mamadou has written a number of books. The latest one that we've been focusing on today is called Morning Being Born Again. It is a book that sheds light on the true impact of the salvation experience, bringing deep understanding to those who seek it. Pastor, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me, Logan. It's a pleasure to be here. The honor was mine, sir, and to the folks at home, oh. I'm Logan Crawford thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight. Oh, thank you. Thank you.